Hi everybody, Gil Ferreira here again from Preserve Pigs. <clears throat> in today's q and I'm going to answer a question that was posted on one of the Facebook forums by a chap called Trevor Soderberg. His question was, my first attempt at dry cured sausage, and I think it's a bust. It's been hanging for a week at around about 14 degrees centigrade and 73% humidity. It's got green mold forming in areas, and I'm wondering if it could be saved or should I just scrap it? What interested me about this question is the topic of mold comes around quite often. And um, I thought I would just take this opportunity to address this particular question. I think I'm going to be talking about mold in, in, a, in a whole bunch of different videos down the line. Um, and each one will, will merit its own um, discussion and, and answer. Um, what I am going to suggest to you is that if you do believe that you've got a mold problem um, and you're not 100% sure of, of whether or not to move forward, is to just pop me an email with a, a photo of the mold and uh, obviously I can take a look at it. Um, one, cannot, one cannot always uh, determine or photograph what the exact problem is uh, because obviously we're not able to touch it or smell it or even taste it. So, you know, again, I will try and help you as much as I possibly can. The other thing that actually did interest me about this particular problem as well, or this particular question and the answers that appeared on this forum, is that there were quite a number of answers that were proposed to this gentleman and they were conflicting and even contradictory to one another. So, you know, I can understand that this sort of thing creates a lot of confusion and, and again, this is part of the reason why I, I started creating this series of this Q&A. And so all I can do is I can take you forward on this particular topic, on what I would um, particularly do in this situation. Um, some other people might have different solutions, but this is the solution that I would implement with this particular problem. Okay, so before we jump into answering the particular problem, I'd just like to highlight a few things about mold. Um, I, I do understand that, particularly for beginners, mold is quite a daunting process, but it doesn't need to be. It just requires some common sense, and obviously, as as you um, learn and 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 grow with with what you're doing, you'll become more experienced in identifying the, the problem areas. And from uh, reading the forums and the questions that have been asked, similar to this one, I can just uh, gather that many kilos of meat has been thrown away unnecessarily because uh, mold is not understood properly. Um, so. What I want you to just have a look at is in my channel, I have made a number of um, videos about mold, just explaining mold and looking at the different types of mold. So I really uh, implore you to, to take a look at those and obviously to read up about mold, particularly when it comes to dry cured meats. Um, that'll also just help you a lot with, with the processes going forward. All right, so let's jump into the, the, the question. And, and I mean, let's start at the beginning, really. Um, we need to understand one thing. We actually do want to have mold on our uh, dry cured meats, whether it be sausage or whole mussels. And we're looking for the good kind of mold. Um, typically, the molds that, that uh, we, we want are the Penicillium nalgiovense or um, a, 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 a mold that has recently been discovered called Penicillium salami. Um, nalgiovense is a chalky white mold that is fast growing and uh, the salami version is also white, but can have tinges of green um, and green spots in it. But it was also quite chalky though. So yeah, we want either of these molds to grow uh, because they are fast growing. And what they actually tend to do is, is grow, generally grow quicker than the other molds. And they create a protective layer around your um, hanging meat that protects it from um, any unwanted microbes and, and molds. Um, okay, so, so just as an example, here are two photos of the mold that I've explaining. The one is currently hanging in my chamber, and as you can see from the photo, it's got a good covering of white mold, and this is the chalky kind that you, that you want. Um, I, I do obtain this mold by applying a product uh, by CHR Hansen called Mold 600. And again, as a beginner, and if you do not quite understand molds, I would implore you to purchase this product and to apply it to your cured meats prior to hanging. Um, it should actually become a habit, um, and that way you can certainly manage the types of mold that you have on your sausages. Uh, the second photograph, you'll see that there are some spots on it, and this is typically um, the um, penicillin salami 
uh, mold, which is also good. So if you're getting mold that looks like this, it's, it's also not a problem. Um, there are a few other desired molds as well, um, but I'm going to deal with those as they crop up in different questions. Um, and, and these are molds, for example, like the mold that you get on a Culatello. Um, but again, I'm not going to go into that because otherwise this is going to become a long convoluted session. All right, so let's just jump straight into this question now. Um, firstly, I'd like to take a more in-depth look at the photograph that has been provided by this guy. Um, and, and I just want to, I must also just point out that Again, as I said earlier, advice given uh, um, off a photo should be taken with caution um, because obviously we, we, we cannot really taste and smell and see it and, and feel it. Um, so it, it is, and, and, you know, color filters and that sort of thing on cameras are different lighting. One, one can't actually get the necessary look at it as one would need to. But anyway, this is what we, what, what we need to deal with. Um, the, the white mold that I'm pointing out now is quite thick, as you can see. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. And from the photo, it does look like it is the penicillium types of mold that we want. And there are also green spots in there, which I'm not too worried about. Um, but if you look at these areas over here, these are clearly hairy mold, gray hairy mold. And with hairy mold, I would proceed with caution. Um, hairy mold does grow extremely fast. And I've also seen where it can dig through the casings and into the meat itself. And this I do not like. So first up, this is unfortunately a failed attempt, um, but it is certainly salvageable. And uh, um, if, if it's treated correctly and treated immediately, you will be able to um, restore these sausages and, and, and it really, uh, you know, they'll still come out very good. All right, so, so what went wrong in this scenario? Um, you know, in, in the question, the, the, uh, uh, Trevor did state that it was at uh, 14 degrees centigrade and 73% humidity, which is pretty much spot on. I mean, I would generally probably drop it a little bit, the, the temperature down, but well, it can be anything between 12 and 14. And the humidity, I would actually push up to 75. That's my desired uh, humidity is at 75%. So clearly the problem is not the temperature and the humidity. Um, for me, this uh, is simply a matter of negligence, okay? And uh, I don't say that as a negative word, it just simply is. Um, you need to understand that when you're curing meat, there, there's certainly always a, a risk of contamination. Um, and, um, you know, obviously if you've, your conditions are set up correctly, then it, 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 it makes, and, and you've cured it correctly, obviously, then it makes that problem a lot less. But you have to still go through a process of risk management in order to ensure that your meats come out the other end perfectly good and unspoilt. Um, so in this scenario, I, I really believe that Trevor did not check his, his um, salamis every day uh, or his uh, curing chamber every day. And this is something, this is a habit that you need to form is, is when you have your morning cup of tea or your morning cup of coffee, at the same time, open up your curing chamber and check the meat that's hanging there. Um, this way you're going to quickly pick up if there are any issues within the chamber itself or you know you've, you, your, your humidifier might have stopped working, whatever it is. Um, and obviously also dealing with unwanted molds that, uh, that, that, that may be developing. Um, you know, you might not have cleaned the, the chamber correctly and you might have some unwanted molds proliferating within the chamber and this then can cause this problem. But if you do check your chamber every day, then obviously you're going to catch this problem very quickly. And in this scenario where there's a, such a thick buildup of mold, he would have caught this earlier and he would have been able to probably um, 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 maintain it by just wiping them off and, and starting with that. So, so what I would have done in this scenario, if I'd caught this problem early, is I actually wouldn't have used vinegar initially. I would have just wiped it down with, it, with a dry cloth, get all the mold off, and then leave it and see what happens. Obviously, if you know, unfortunately, with mold, is if you've got a, a strain of mold, sometimes it, it repeats itself. But this has gone quite far. So I would venture that this this chap hasn't checked his uh, chamber probably in a week or possibly two or three weeks even. Um, the other reason why you also want to check your chamber every day is that every time you open it, th there is an op opportunity for an insect to fly or something to fly in that you don't possibly see. And the last thing you want to do is have insects lay eggs on your 
on your uh, meat and you get maggots and you got to toss the meat. So again, these things, you know, if you open your, your chamber, the, the flies will be disturbed and you'll see if there's a problem. You can take out your meat, you can clean it out and you can put them back. Obviously, you have to be very careful usually when you open your chamber to ensure that you don't get any insects flying in and out. Um, in, in my scenario, I do try and check my chamber every single day, but I will not go for three days and not um, you know not checking my chamber you need to manage this carefully if, if you're going to go away on a holiday and you've got meat hanging you know then get your father-in-law or your father or your mother or whoever to come in and just double check every single day it's open it up and there's another reason for that which i'll deal with but that's circulation of air um, but it's really important and i tend to plan my cures around things like my my holidays so if i know that I, i'm going away on a holiday a month or two before that i won't put any new meats in because i know that i'm not going to be able to manage it while i'm away okay so so now that we've had a look at what i think the the the, the cause of the problem or the root of the problem is how, how do we now go about salvaging this as i said at the beginning of this uh, um, q a i think that the sausage is still salvageable um, and what i would do in this situation is to wipe off the mold with a solution of apple cider vinegar or white wine vinegar and water and i mix it in a solution of 10 to 90 in other words for every for a liter of solution, it will be 100 milliliters of vinegar and 900 milliliters of water. I don't want the vinegar to be overpowering, but I need the acid there to be able to remove it. You also do not want to overwet the sausages, so don't make them completely damp. You take your cloth, dip it in, make sure that the majority of the the, the water is squeezed out, and then you wipe down and wipe it. You, you got to you got to hold your sausages quite hard to. To, to get off all the all the mold and then rinse your cloth and then dip it back in don't dip the solution back the, the, the cloth back into the solution and then and then wipe again because um, then that that solution is going to get full of the mold so the, rinse your cloth dip it in again and wipe again and wipe it until everything is off okay once you've once you've managed to wipe all the the, the mold off then you're going to dry it carefully with kitchen towels so that they're completely dry before you hang them back into the chamber. And then I would be sure to check it within 24 hours. Even 12 hours is, is, is preferable, but at least within 24 hours to make sure that the bad molds have not returned. Um, you also need to ensure that your, your chamber is not infected by these unwanted molds. So when you rehang them, and, uh, and if they do reappear, on the meat after you've wiped it down with the vinegar solution, then you, then you know that there is more than likely uh, con your, your, your chamber is probably contaminated with the, the unwanted molds. So what I would do then is I would remove all the sausages and then I would wipe down all the surfaces within your chamber with that the, the, the same mix of that solution with the vinegar and and um, water. Don't use um, bleach or anything like that. that. That you do right at the beginning. Don't Try not to use the detergents or anything like that because that'll kill any traces of mold within your chamber. But again, you might have to start again. And, and, and you know, if you need to reintroduce the mold, then, then you would do that using CHR Hansen's Mold 600. Okay, so now, now I just want to deal with, with some of the, the, the answers that I've seen. And, and one is where, where, where people suggest using something like wine. Again, wine is not too bad. Um, it, it is acidic and it does help to remove, but it's not quite as strong as, as, um, as the vinegar. So I would rather use vinegar than wine. People, I know why people would use wine is because they would believe that the flavor of the vinegar will be imparted onto the sausage, but it won't. You've mixed it with the water and if you dry it off carefully, you're not going to have a vinegar flavor on your sausage at all. The other solution I've also seen is using tepid water. And I understand the logic behind using tepid water, and, and again, I'll explain this to you, um, but it's not going to work in this scenario, and I'll explain that to you as well. Um, using the vinegar, and, and well, so the argument against using vinegar and rather tepid water is that the vinegar is going to get rid of all the mold, even the good stuff. And yes, I agree, it is going to do that. But when your sausages have gone to, or your meats have gone to a level where they look like the, the photograph provided by this gentleman, I think it's gone a step too far. And you, you actually do need to remove those, those molds. And whilst you do want the good molds, and that does create part of the flavor profiles that you need on your, on your meats, um, you just run the risk of getting the bad molds again, and you're going to have to do it over and over and over again. 
So by applying the vinegar solution, you're going to get rid of the molds, but your sausages are going to cure fine, and, and you're going to have a good product at the end of the day. This is a lesson to learn not uh, on what not to do the next time you, 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 you cure the meats and, and so that you do get the good mold. And again, I implore you, you know, prevention is, is better than cure. So rather apply the mold 600 as soon as you've, you've, you've um, are ready to hang your meats. And that way you're going to get the great uh, mold covering that you, you, that you need in order to, um, to, to, to make sure that your salamis are safe and that you get the right profiles. Um, the tepid water, unfortunately, as I said, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's just not good enough. Um, if, if you do catch the problem early, then you can try, as I said earlier, I, I would use just a dry cloth to wipe off the mold in, but you could then use the tepid water as well to move it, to, to remove it. But once it gets to this stage, you've got a problem and the problem will keep on recurring unless you remove it. And the only way, unfortunately, I believe to remove it or the way that I approach it is, and, and, and quite honestly through experience, is through removing it with a vinegar solution. Um, and, you know, guys, as I said earlier on in, in, in this um, video, is if you are going to get into curing in a serious way, you are going to have to spend some time on getting to know the molds and understanding them and, and not fear them. Uh, most molds actually are not going to cause any harm. Even these hairy molds and that sort of thing, if they, if they are caught in time, if they're left unchecked, certainly you're going to have to toss the meat. Um, and, and really, honestly, even some of the interesting colored molds that you, that you may get, um, you know, whilst they may be a problem, you can get rid of them. The only area that I would really panic and, and toss meat is when I see black mold on, on uh, my cured meats. And even then, if I've got casings uh, on my sausages or I've covered my meat with, with um, hog uh, sheets or something like that, the chances are that that mold has gone through into the meat is highly unlikely. So it is still manageable. But black mold is, is one of those that, that it's a tough bugger to get rid of. And invariably, if you start seeing black mold on your meat, it means that it is within your chamber as well. And I would then just encourage you to remove all the meat, wipe everything off, clean, the, the, as I explained earlier with the vinegar solution, clean the, 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 the chamber completely, um, wipe down all the surfaces, and then rehang the meat. Um, you, you can also just where the black mold has appeared on the on the meats is to make take one sausage and cut around that area and to see if it's gone or cut this, this casing to see if it has actually penetrated through the casing onto the meat. If it has got onto the meat, then I would toss it. I really wouldn't um, um, take the chance or the risk of of rehanging it and then trying it. Um, black mold really is quite dangerous if you if you um, do uh, ingest it. Okay, so, you know, that's all I'm going to deal with in this scenario. Obviously, I hope this has clarified this particular issue, obviously, for Trevor and for people who have similar issues or similar questions. Um, obviously, if you have more questions about this particular issue or any topic regarding cured meats um, and you want me to, to, to assist you or tackle the, that, that particular problem, please send me an email to questions at preservepigs.com and let's see if we can help you guys. Thank you so much for joining this uh, Q&A and we'll see you later. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my YouTube channel.